show you the garage. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs>so we're up in the hills of hollywood with my friend ken and uh and ken is is has offered to uh show us his collection of um what you, have you have not just tell us a, a it's little wax bit. figures and costumes and so i always collected through the years and i was in the movie business so i was collecting things in the movie business you know uh, after the, the wrap, I take a hat or something from like uh, Chuck Connors or somebody. You know, I want that hat. I really like it. Mm -hmm. So they'd give it to me. You know, uh, so you were a costumer. I was. A costumer. You were literally a costumer was a in the costumer, movies. But I was a makeup artist first. Okay. I was a makeup artist, and uh, that's what I did for a living. And then I would hang around the costume people all the time, and um, I'd end up more interested in costumes than and makeup. <laughs> so Ken, you're gonna show us your collection? Yeah, I'll oh, show I you can't. the collection, I'll take in the house and show you some figures we have in the house, and then I'll take in the garage and show you my collection. I can't wait. Oh look, it's Batman, it's a Shakespeare statue from Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Oh, look, Johnny Depp is right here. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah the way sorry. <laughs> This is my Johnny Depp. Um, this is actually done off the cast of his face. And I made the hair and the wig. All the hair is plunged. And the costume I made. You made the costume? Yeah, I made the costume for this figure, yes. I bought the rings. Uh, you can get them online. And uh, the boots I bought online, too. Are they like, are they like, these are, uh, you know, copies of Johnny Depp's yeah, rings? Yeah, these are okay. all copies of Johnny Depp's ring. Wow. And the wig's all made handmade. Look at their hands. Look at the detail in those hands. Mm -hmm. Does he have a scar on his hand like that? Yeah, he also has this tattoo, if you notice. The Winona, the Wino one? <laughs> or is it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, cool. Yeah. That's neat. Wow. I the skin tones are just really yeah. amazing. That's all portrait painted in oil. That's how I, I was learned by Logan Fleming. He taught me how to use oil. Of course, I was a makeup artist, so that helped too. Yeah. You know, so that worked out really good. And then we'll go over here and show Betty Davis to you. <laughs> of course, this is Betty Davis and all about Eve. Oh. And, uh,. The wig is all lace. It's a lace wig. Uh, we, I did this in covert when they had covert. So I, I don't know how to do wigs. I'm not a hairstylist, but I was forced to make this wig. <laughs> I'm going, okay, I'll do it. And I did the best I can. And it came out really nice. Yes, actually. it did. It sure I'm did. Not being a hairdresser. <laughs> how difficult is it, is, is it to uh, focus people's eyes so they match? It's, it's, it's difficult to get the eyes to look a certain way. Yeah. You know, you can have one off and it look funny. So you really have to kind of figure out how is the eyes, which eyes looking at a certain yeah. area to make it look normal, you know. That would be really, I, w I would imagine that would take quite a long time to yeah. get it right. You're just like, eh, and then you have to figure out little the, little. the iris and, and the, the eyelid to the other end. You mind if I go real close? Yeah, you can go close as you want. <laughs> wow, look at the details. Yeah, it's all portrait painted. The hands are all... The hands are painted in wax, but they're actually mannequin hands that have been manipulated to look like what I want them to look like in the movie. The dress I made. Do you, when you say manipulated, do you like, do you melt them and then pose them or? Yeah, it's a mannequin hand and the hand might be like this and I had to break it off and move it like this and turn it and twist it. And then I glue it all up and then pour wax on it and smooth it down and then do portrait painting. And I paint it in oil so it would look smooth. You don't notice the cracks or any of the yeah. mounting. Because these are regular mannequin mounts, but you don't see it now because I covered it all up. And the costume? The costume I made. It's all handmade. Wow. Uh, Copied the movie, you know, costume. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's incredible. And, uh, it's all about Eve. Very neat. And getting the hand to twist, you know, to hold the cigarette to look like she would hold it. Yeah. I would take photographs of her holding it and, and see how, what she's doing with her hands. Uh, the fingernails are actually fake. They're fake fingernails that you can buy and glue. 
We, we used to do them in wax, but they break off too easy. So now we use plastic thing and else. So it, as a, I know you can't, because it's a work in progress. You're always doing stuff. You're touching them up. And oh, yeah. what, for, say from thought in your head to uh -huh. creation in, in, in your studio, mm -hmm. completed, how long of a, of a process do you think that is? I, I mean, I can't. I know this, this one took me about a month and a half because I had the face already. The face was actually Betty Davis, all about, I mean, uh, whatever happened to baby Jane. And it was really ugly. And they had wrinkles on her forehead. And I got the face from Movie Land, and I didn't like it. And I said, well, I'm going to turn it into All About Eve. Mm -hmm. So I had to get rid of the wrinkles in her forehead. So I filled those up in wax, cleaned it all up, smoothed it down, and turned her into this. Beautiful. And, and the body and everything, the, it's all waxed from here. And then this arm here locks in like a mannequin. You just lock it in. That's incredible. Very, very nice. This is the Barry Marsh oh, look movie at, <laughs> Look at that. With the clapboard and everything. Yeah. I got the original clapboard and the chair. And the funny thing about it, a friend of mine, Lo uh, Logan Fleming, he got Marilyn Monroe. He bought Marilyn Monroe from Movie Land. Well, her jewelry came in it. And his wife goes, we got a funny little necklace. I don't know whose it is, but you might look at it and see, you know more about Movie Land than we do. And I said, okay. So I looked at it and I go, oh. Well, it's Ethel Barrymore's <laughs> necklace from Movie Land. It's this one right here. Oh, funny. And so she gave it to me to put on the wax figure. How nice. And uh, the chair's the original. All their costumes, the original. Now, this one here I had to make. Uh, unfortunately, when they sold the wax figures, this was sold separate. And uh, Drew Barrymore, she bought this figure because she loved her uncle. And so she bought the one from Movie Land. So I had to reproduce it for this group because I wanted all three of them. <laughs> I said, I'm not changing the clapboard, so I need to make another wax figure. <laughs> hmm. So I made him. I plunged all his hair and, and did the costume exactly the one uh, way they had it at Movie Land. Very he's he's cool. holding his hands the same way and everything. But the, the other two are the originals. Uh, the costume, I bought it because Frank and John, who made El uh, Liberace and Elvis's costumes, uh, they made this costume for Movie Land, and they're very good friends of mine. They used to give me things for my birthday. So I wanted this outfit, and that's why I bought the, the set. I bought the costumes and the set for this. Okay. That's beautiful. Isn't that pretty? Yes, it is. I wanted it because Frank and John made the costume. And the, and the sad thing about it, uh, Fong, when he bought Movie Land, they took this and put it in storage. And the guys who put it in storage put it underneath a water pipe. So this sash, it, the water covered the costume completely with red oh. dye, everything. So I had to reproduce the costume, and I cut every one of these out of the costume and put it back originally like it was. Now the cape is the original. This one here is the original. I didn't have to do much. Oh, I see. It's a cape. I thought those were sleeves. Okay. Yeah. Well, see how she's made? She's just a stuffed, stuffed horsehair stuffed. On a mannequin. And what year was this made, do you think? Oh, this thing was 60-some years old. Uh, it was brought in uh, when they... 1960, 1963. Mm -hmm. They opened the museum in Movie Land. Because uh, Logan... I mean, Spoonie opened his about the same time, too. And uh, so these have been around so long. And the problem with them, because they've been around so long, the wax oil in the heads dry out. And they become very brittle and break very easily. So I have to be careful with them because they can break very easily. Gosh, look at the detail on that hair. Yeah, all the hair is plunged, one hair at a time, plunged in with a needle and then styled. And the, the eyes are glass, glass eyes. Huh. Really, really. <laughs> so incredible. Now I'll show you this one in here. Then we'll go in the bedroom. That is the Batman thing, isn't it? Yes. That's the bat phone, or the bat pole thing. Yeah. When you open the cave? You open the... Yeah. Open the head. <laughs> turn the thing. That is so cool. <laughs> and I can actually hook it up. I can put, turn lights on or whatever. <laughs> that's so fun. Oh, look at that, a gingham dress. Yeah, that was made for the wax figure, and we had it custom made off the original one. So this is very close to the original one. That's why I keep it. Okay. The only difference thing is we don't have the pocket. 
we don't have the hidden pocket because okay. it was made for the wax figure. So, but everything is zacked off the original. We borrowed one of the original ones and then copied it. You know? Oh, they let you touch it? Yeah. Wow. So it's very, very old, but it's it's really nice. Wow, uh, there's there, Sammy. Sammy Davis from Movie Land. Oh, that is so <laughs> neat. It's so neat to see these guys again. I remember I them. And Troy, you used to go there a lot, didn't you? And this is Elvis. And uh, this is called the lion costume, the lion outfit. Uh, I knew the guy who designed the costume. Yeah. And I asked him if, if he would design one and build one for me. And he says, I really don't normally do that. And I said, well, if I pay you some good money, would you do one? He said, okay, I'll make one for you, Ken. So he did, and he had used all the jewels that he used for the original one, and he made this one for me. Whoa, <laughs> that is breathtaking. Wow. Everything's exact the way Elvis is, same size, same uh, measurements. The mannequin I had to build to match the costume size. The belt's all custom made. Now, um, Graceland has this costume on, on display, mm -hmm. but the only difference is they don't have the belt because uh, Hard Rock Cafe owns it and they won't sell it to them. <laughs> so they show it without the belt. Wow, look at Sammy. That is yeah. wonderful. And this is going to sound, people hate when I say stuff like this, but it's got to be, with the pigment, it's got to be better for darker skin. Right. He's, you know, better to make it more lifelike, isn't right. it, than pale mm -hmm. Caucasian skin, yeah. I think. Yeah. And because uh, it's, I remember uh, going to Hollywood and I think there was, um, oh, I forget who it was. Well, Morgan Freeman was in there, right. wasn't he? Right. And I remember just going, Right, I mean, and, yeah. you know, inches right from in his it. face, yeah. and it Real was like, close to it. Yeah. and it was, it was uncanny. I mean, yeah. it was, it was. If he had yeah. moved, I wouldn't have been surprised. Uh, one second. Yeah, I'll show you the difference from Logan. He painted this. Logan yeah. me. He paints them dark, but if you put lights on them, you can see all the highlights. Oh, okay, yeah, sure can. That's real art. That is There's real eyes. art. That is real art. So you have to put lights that are hitting the eyes. That's a real art. <laughs> that yeah. is really stunning. And then the highlights on the forehead. Yeah. And the nose. And, you know, you figure out what their picture is, their face, their bone structure, mm -hmm. and then you paint it on there. So you can paint their face on the wax figure. And then all their highlights and their bumps and their nose and, you know, that kind of thing. So it's properly lit. It really looks great. Now, what's the uh, what's the ticket? What's the uh, what's the, is that a business card? No, it's actually a ticket to Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Look at that. It's an old one. At the Hollywood that Bowl. That might be backwards. I don't know. Twenty fifteen. Uh, Sinatra's hundredth birthday. Okay. Yeah. Jose Turby uh, Foundation. Wow. And that's dead, uh, that's movie. I mean, Hollywood Museum. That's Hollywood Museum that did that. And we went to the thing. That was my ticket. <laughs> was that is is that Superman or is that Satan? It's <laughs> it's, it's S for Sammy Davis. <laughs> it's an S for Sammy Davis. It's in part of his jewelry. <laughs> now I do have in the garage. I have the Rat Pack. Oh yeah. I have Frank, Sammy, and Dean. I don't have them up right now, but I can show them to you. And they're all tuxedos, and they all got custom made labels inside and everything. Now this is Parkinson, Al Parkinson. He's the one that invented Movie Land. He started Movie Land. So was this on display in? This was made by Logan Fleming, solid wax. It's sculptured off him and it was set on his desk. It was a gift for him by Logan and he had it in his desk in his office. So when he passed away and they closed Movie Land, they didn't want it anymore. And I said, I'll take it. I know Parkinson. <laughs> you know? The, um, so he is, Logan just sort of fell into it yeah. and became this this the amazing, curious. iconic yeah. sculptor. He made he made the wax figures. He fell into it by painting, yeah. oil painting them. And they said, my God, it looks so real when you you know light them up and everything. And he ended up making Movie Land what it was, the, you know, the number one museum in the United States at that time. And it, they made a fortune off that. He started Movie Land with us Sleepies. He invented Sleepies, the pill. 
Like Somanex, like a sleeping pill? Yeah, it's called, oh. he, it was called Sleepies. Okay. And he invented that, and so he sold it to a company, and when he sold it to the company, the money he made, he built Movie Land Wax Museum. So that was his passion? That's his passion, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Come on in, I'll show you Debbie. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> there she is. <laughs> this is Debbie Reynolds. <laughs> wow, look at her. And, uh, she, the face is actually uh, tucking off of the one she had at Movie Land when she was a nun. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. they ended up getting that one at Hollywood, didn't they? Yeah, and, and my friend Dave Reedy owns it now. That's great. He I'm glad it was one of Hollywood. my favorites. Yeah, I loved it on the it. scooter. Yeah. Loved it. Well, I had to change it because they sold, Fong sold the scooter. And uh, I ended up having to change it. And she's playing a guitar now. This is the original outfit that Debbie wore on stage in Las Vegas at her hotel. I wish I had seen her live there. That would have been neat. I'm yeah. glad I went to the museum, but uh, I, I wish I'd have seen her there. And I bought this. Uh, Todd had the auction at uh, Profiles in History, and I bought it off the auction because I wanted it because I used to see her in it all the time on stage because mm -hmm. when I was there, and I'm going... And then she also wore it to Boston, Boston Pop uh, Music. She was singing there, and she wore it on stage there, too. But that's all done in oil. God bless her. Yeah. She did a lot for us, for us collectors, didn't she? Oh, yeah. She Without just... her, gone. And then uh, the posters, Movie Land, you know, it's the poster. It's signed by Al Parkinson and Logan Fleming, the wax artist. Al doesn't uh, sign for anybody. I got him drunk. <laughs> he, went, he went to Spoonie and, and they used to sit and drink up in the office. He came down, I had this poster, and I said, come on, sign this. He said, no, I don't sign anything. And I said, come on, you got to sign this. Look, <laughs> look, Logan Fleming signed it, you know. <laughs> You're going to make him, you know, the big one, you know. Oh, okay. So he turned around and signed it for me. So it's the only one is this thing with both of them signed. Logan's passed away. They're both gone now. And then all these pictures that you see on the wall here is when I was a makeup artist, I worked with all these stars. And this is my first boss, Don Post's senior at Don Post Studios, a mask company in Burbank. It was the number one mask company in the world at that time. Who's this? And uh, Southern. Oh, okay. <laughs> and there's uh, there's your swamp thing. Yeah, there's my swamp thing. So you, thing. you, you, you helped create that costume? That I made the costume for the movie, me and uh, another guy. Um, he, he put it together. I almost wanted to kill him because it didn't fit. And uh, Dick Rock was the monster. Mm -hmm. He's a stuntman and, and uh, it didn't fit him so we had to make it work. And I, I just really pulled my hair out to that movie trying to make this thing work. And it'd get in the real swamps and it'd yeah. just blow up like a balloon. It worked with Lee Remick? Yeah, Lee Remick. She was a nice lady. She used to make tea for me when I was doing her makeup. And she'd say, Ken, sit there and have some tea. How nice. Margaret O'Brien's a friend of mine, and she's very nice. She, yeah. <laughs> okay. That's, that's me right, right here. Oh, that's, look. That's me in my workshop at the Wax Museum. The Dead Man's from Hell Night. I love that movie. Uh, Adam Blair. West and, uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, Hell Night with Linda Blair. Yes. I did the makeup, I did all the models. Oh, Hell Night, not One Dark Night, Hell Night, no, Hell with Vince Van Patten and, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Vince Van Patten and, uh, and um, all those actors, there were a bunch of kids, and, they, and then this is Blood Red with Eric Roberts and Julie Roberts. Well, I didn't know about Judy, and <laughs> I worked with her, and I didn't know about it, and one day I was looking at my pictures in my book, and I went, wait a minute, that looks like Julie Roberts, and, and I go, oh my God, it is, <laughs> and I said, I worked with her, I didn't even know it, you know. Blood red. Yeah. And that, then the picture Julian Sands. The picture way up at no. top. No. And the guy with the cowboy hat, that's me doing makeup on Cher. Oh fun. And I was making Cher up. I used to make Cher up. And she playing Miss Kitty uh, like a takeoff on Gunsmoke. On her show. Uh-huh. So yeah. we had red hair red hair okay. wig. That's the red wig that we put on. The back is lace and the front is lace. And they glue it on top of each other. So that way, when she bends her head, her hair won't come off like a wig would, you know? It would look like a real hair, you know? It look like her own hair. This figure here is Blue Boy from Movie Land, Palace of Living Art. I remember this. Yeah. I have Pinky. You'll see her in my workshop. Oh, fun. You got them both. I'm reworking her, yeah. Unfortunately, she melted her arm. <laughs> She's like, whoop. That's a occupational hazard, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> they say melt, yeah. 
Now the body's made out of paper mache, and the hands are wax, and the head's wax. All the hair is hand plunged. This is the original costume. It's been clean and fixed. I redid the collar a couple times, uh, but it is well kept. Thank God. So this uh, Sir Thomas Gainsborough, where did he came? He's British, but where did he come from to do this? Did it was it done in, in England and brought it was back? Probably done in England okay. and brought in. Yeah. Yeah. This is an earlier one too. When they put in and they made um, uh, Palace of Living Art Movie Land, they did that one. Yeah. Ah, how neat. Beautiful. And uh, Cecilia Cruz, a friend of mine, she's a Spanish singer. Yeah. Well known. And that's a picture of me and her in a little one in the corner. And Linda Blair in the corner. The, the guy on the top is Sky Chief. He was the puppeteer and he also made wax figures. For oh, you mentioned him earlier. Yeah, 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 yeah. He made wax figures and stuff too. And he's a friend of mine. This He used to be a dancer in Paris at the Moulin Rouge. Oh, they had men dancers there? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, they had boy dancers with the girls. And then Debbie signed all kinds of things for me. This was me here with nice hair. <laughs> <laughs> when I had brown hair then. And the, the guy I'm making up is actually uh, Beaver. Jerry, Jerry Mathers. Mathers, oh sure, I could see it now. Yeah, that's Jerry I've Mathers. never seen him look like a mustache. Looks more like Johnny and, Aston. And here. the funny thing about it, we were doing a takeoff on, on Holmes and Watson, and we used Robbie the robot. And there's a picture of Robbie over there in that little. Oh room. yeah. And he has a little Sherlock Holmes costume on him. <laughs> oh fun. And he was in it, but they, they canceled the pilot, uh, Universal, and then they turned around and made some other kind of TV show robots. Yeah. How neat. Okay. Show you the garage. Whoa. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Fabulous. You just expect this in the garage. No. Oh my gosh. This is the cars. <laughs> this is Mae West. And this outfit, the photograph you can see, she's wearing the actual outfit she wore on stage in Las Vegas. Oh, okay. This is the actual one she's wearing. You can see some silver right there at the side. But that's the actual dress she wore on stage in Las Vegas. I made the wax figure of her. And she's wearing the costume and all the jewelry's hers. And Those are real diamonds. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> she never wore real diamonds. <laughs> Wow. And look at her. Jeez. And this is Phyllis Jeez. Diller. And Phyllis is actually wearing her real boots. It's her real gloves. It's her real hair. <laughs> she donated the hair to the wig, to the mannequin. And it's actually her dress. Yeah. That's... Love that. Yeah. She wore that at the Hollywood Palladium in Hollywood. She wore this outfit. Oh, at the Palladium? Okay. Yeah, at the Palladium. And then this is Carol Burnett. And Annie. Oh, you can see Miss the picture Hannigan? of Carol right there. Sure. I chased her down at the Hollywood Bowl to have her autograph it. <laughs> and I said, I got that outfit, you know. And she goes, Oh, no, you don't. I said, Yeah, Frank and John gave it to me for my birthday. <laughs> they actually gave it to me for my birthday. They made the costume for Annie. They did all the Annie costumes. Amazing. So that's Carol Burnett. And they, if you see the end of it, she comes in on a, a little a baby elephant. And the, this thing here is draped in the back of the elephant. Oh, okay. It's all in the back end. Those are real elephant. peacock feathers, aren't they? Yeah, they are real peacock feathers. <laughs> yeah. Well, Miss and Hannigan. Demolition Man. And this is Arnold's. I do have the pants, but unfortunately I don't have the mannequin long enough to put the pants on. <laughs> you know, I would have thought he'd be bigger than that. No, he was skinny then. He was very skinny. He is a little bit bigger than that because I did have to pinch the belt in mm -hmm. for the mannequin. He's a lot bigger than that mannequin but yeah sometimes we have to make them fit right. okay this is eddie murphy from uh, dr doolittle and this is actually his outfit he wore in dr little that's one of his outfits suits and he's made out of fiberglass we turned him into fiberglass because he was in front of the wax museum uh -huh. and we didn't want him to melt okay so we made him into fiberglass and it's actually a wig short wig put on we had to sit there and cut the wig really short. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is an old sign from San Francisco when they were going out of business. And I, I took it out of the trash. I said, I want to keep it. 
and uh, for a keepsake. Yeah. Yeah, that's Starbucks. Starbucks? Yeah, that's what they call him, this guy here, the blonde. That's his outfit. Starbucks? Starbucks, they call it. I that was the that. title of the name. Yeah, didn't his know name, that. name, Starbucks. And they had the gun. You put the gun on the holster. Of course, it doesn't fire. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> phony. <laughs> These things sell for a lot of money, just separate. And then and the very thing is you can buy these things, but it's very hard to find the actual cape with the, with the trim. So that's authentic to the costume. Yeah. Wow. This, these are all real. Everything is original from the TV show. Yeah. It's very rare you get a whole complete costume. But I, through the years, I kept buying pieces and bits. And when I bought the top, it came with the, the cape, which normally nowadays you can get them on it auction but you never see one with a cape mm -hmm. the lady behind you right here in the peak oh oh wait oh gosh that looks familiar <laughs> oh i'm looking right at it now share and mermaids of uh -huh. course i knew i recognize that <laughs> yeah it's share <laughs> and mermaids it's her mermaid outfit that is a great dress yeah she also wore it in a, a video uh Oh, the, the music video for music that song. Video, yeah, yeah, she worked in that. Um, in his kiss, I think it was. Yeah, the kiss no, or something. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's great. And that's her. That's that's, that's actual, really her. That's hers. And then this is Ben Hur. This is an actual outfit from Ben Hur. And in those days they insisted everything be real, so it's real metal. Oh. It's a metal one. Nowadays they make them out of vacuum formed plastic. Yeah. But these are all human, real metal. That must have been uncomfortable. It is heavy. Yeah, it's very uncomfortable. But this is one of the costumes I bought from Benner. I have two of them. I have another one like this too, but it's not as decorated so, mm -hmm. so much. This is Cher. I mean, Cher. <laughs> this is Carol Burnett. Oh, okay. Carol Burnett show. And this is her, her little blouse. So that's, I would imagine that's a Bob Mackie? Yes, it's a okay. Bob Mackie, yes. Yeah. yeah this, I have three of her outfits. Oh, yeah? So did they shoot, when you were on... Um, they shot this at CBS, mm -hmm. and I saw a picture in your office or in your room of you, and I meant to ask where they shot that show, and it must have been CBS, but I can't remember the show. Mm -hmm. I'll have to ask. But then this one here is Linda Carter, and she did a special, TV special, and this is her wearing the outfit. Fun. And this is Linda Carter. She donated this outfit to the wax figure of the Hollywood Wax Museum, and this is one I saved because they took her out, and they didn't want her anymore. We should throw her away. So I said, I'm not throwing this away. It's a Bob Mackie. Yeah. And it's Linda Carter's, you know. This is the actual outfit she's wearing right there in the photographs. Wow. Yeah. And then I have several outfits of uh, Mitzi Gaynor. Oh, Mitzi. Mitzi Gaynor, yeah. Mitzi. In her cape. <laughs> the funny thing about it, when she did the, uh, the video photograph of this, she wore the cape backwards. Oh, funny. You know, so if you look at the photograph, you can see it. She's wearing it backwards. <laughs> she's kind of covered yeah. up with it. Yeah. You know. Wow. Well, look at that costume. Look at those feathers. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're all Bob Mackie. It's all Bob Mackie done. All this is all hand stitched. All this. It's all hand stitched by Bob Mackie. My head is spinning right now looking around here. I'm like, oh my God, where are we going next? Yeah. <laughs> now, if you want, yeah, we can remove this here so you can get it around better. I think we'll be all right. Okay. I can, I'll be, I can stand back. And now, this is one Todd would probably want because the very rare Debbie's costumes when she was very young at the very beginning of mm -hmm. her career. And this is when she played a little girl, Two Weeks of Love. There's a picture of her right there wearing it. And she sung Yabba Dabba Honeymoon in it. When she's hanging on a tree. Mm. Wow. It's I in such little, good shape. Yeah. Such good shape. Yeah, I got it a long time ago, and uh, matter of fact, it was so long, I don't even know what auction. I think it was Cannon House. And the coat was perfect shape. Yeah, no moths, nothing. No marks, no bleeding, no you know stains or anything. I keep it perfectly well with uh, acid-free paper, and I try to keep it as best I can. So where are we going next? <laughs> <laughs> right here. We're we going to Hugh Brenner. Yul Brenner, look at that. Yeah, this is the Ten Commandments. And he's made out of fiberglass. 
an oil painting. So he's hollow. Yeah, he's hollow. His head is wax. The head comes off and it's wax. It's a wax head. Yeah. Now, did he model, do you think? Uh, I'm sure he did. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. And I think it's the actual height of him, too. He's not that big. Uh, he's not tall. He's not a tall person. And he's Will. Yeah, I think he's six at the max, and that's about in the older days. And this is uh, Slim Somerville. From oh, so I thought it was Will Rogers. No, it's Slim oh, Somerville. Oh, okay. Will okay. Man. I'm going to edit that out. And, uh, <laughs> this is Slim Somerville. Yeah. And he was with uh, Zazu Pitt at uh -huh. Movie Land. I do have Zazu Pitt's head in, in plaster. One day I'll make one. I'll make her. This is Logan. They always thought Logan did this because his nose is red, and Logan's nose was this color. It was totally red. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, that's so, it's so unbelievable. Like, you literally put a foot from it, and it would yeah. be... All the highlights, the shadows, and everything. Yes. All this yellow highlights and everything. And it's all hand-painted in oil. Hmm. It's incredible. Yeah. No, they sold John Wayne. They sold him at in, uh, in England. I mean, they turned around and sold him to uh, um, Japan. Fong did. So I made this one, but I made it off of John Wayne's head, mm -hmm. the original head. So uh, I put him together. And like, the backdrop that you see. I was just going to say, it's a great backdrop. The backdrop is actually from Movie Land. It's is it? One half of John Wayne's backdrop. We bought the set at Movie Land. The wax museum did. The other half's at the wax museum in Hollywood on one side of the wall. It's so <laughs> interesting. Because <laughs> Cynthia say those stories, and you were there too. She said like they were selling stuff that's like that you can buy it really cheap, but they, you got to get it out you in like an out. hour. Yeah. And it's like we had <laughs> um, what's his name? Uh, can't think of his name right now. Um, we had one of the sets, and the whole set was nothing but mirrors. And, and uh, the lady was with us. She said, "You got 15 minutes to get this out." Do you think they're oh, just they're being the dicks? I mean, they were. They're being mean. Like, you know, no heart to them. Like, nuts. get it name. by tonight. Yeah, she just said, you know, you got 15 minutes to get it out. Could we're closed? I'm going home. Wow. Said, well, how can we get this thing out? There's yeah. No so we just took the desk and the props, and the wax figure was sold off to somebody else. So we couldn't get that, and we just left the set because we could not take it out. Hmm. The same thing with John Wayne. We bought John Wayne. The only thing we could take was the props. Mm -hmm. And you know, the some of the footage, um, they took the dog and everything, sold it off. That's right. We kept the yeah. backdrop, and uh, we couldn't keep the porch or anything because your porch was attached to another set somewhere else. So we couldn't tear that down because it was attached to another set. Yeah, Cynthia tells that story about getting that. I don't know, trying to remove something that was next to the Star Trek set. Yeah. And, you know, somebody, so they, but you can't touch well, See, like the, the R-Guy, yeah. the R-Gang set at Movie Land, the other side of the set was um, Buster Keaton's set. Oh, and Cynthia has part of that. Yeah. And when they did it, the guys who bought the R-Gang set couldn't tear it down because it was part of the other set, and the other set was sold separate to somebody else. So you, you have two people fighting the same yeah. set. <laughs> it's like... And this is Canteen Floss yeah. from Movie Land. He's so good. And the nice thing about Canteen Floss from Movie Land is Canteen Floss actually donated his costume to Movie Land. Oh. This is actually Canteen's actual costume that he wore. And if you open the vest, you can tell how long it's been sitting in the museum. <laughs> oh, sure. You can see a little. Yeah. <laughs> and this used to be red. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. And this oh, used I to see. be. Wow. Yeah. And uh, you can see it's kind of pinkish yeah. color. It used to be really nice. And then this used to be a solid, but it's just falling apart. You touch it, it tears because it's original. I didn't want to damage it because it is Canteen Floss. Mm -hmm. It's actually his outfit. Not many people have the original outfit. I would, yeah, I was going to say. So I've got one the original. That we in. And this Let's is Celia Cruz. Cruz. And you were, how did you become friends with her? Uh, Celia, uh, I was working at the Wax Museum and we did a wax figure. Logan did a wax figure from Movie Land and he wanted to do one at Hollywood Wax Museum. So she came over and he cast her, you know, and talked to her and all that. She donated a Mambo King dress to the wax figure at Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And the Mambo King dress ended up robbing them, threw it out. I ended up getting it and I sold it at an auction 
because you know I had 200 costumes I had to get rid of some of them mm -hmm. I got rid of a hundred costumes so I sold that one but she sent this one the the corporation the company that she works with her gang uh, sent it to me as the last outfit she wore before she passed away no kidding so I wanted it I said oh yeah I definitely want that costume because she wore it and here's a picture of her wearing it Oh sure. Is this when she got her star on the Walk of Fame? Because it wasn't. I don't think it was that long after she passed yeah, away. Yeah, she passed you know? away after that. Yeah. She's wonderful. She's picking up limbs. She did a the um, Spanish festival at the Hollywood Bowl mm -hmm. every year, and she picked me up in a limo, and I get front row seats with her. How <laughs> fun! You know, she'd give me <laughs> tickets for. And this is her wig. She always wore wigs. She never wore no wigs. Every time you see her, she has a wig on. But that's one of her wigs she gave me, and I also have her earrings, too. That's special. Yeah, so I liked her. I mean, we had a great time together. We, you know, because I was down to earth, she was down to earth, and she, she let her hair down around me. So she didn't feel like she had to be somebody, you know. Mm -hmm. she, was a, she was a doll. I loved her. And then this is Mona Lisa from Movie Land. Uh, Cynthia has the backdrop for that. <laughs> oh, does she? She said, I'll give you the backdrop. And I said, where am I going to put it? <laughs> How big is the it's backdrop? <laughs> Double size of this one. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm going, what am I going to do with it? I gave it to Dave Reedy. <laughs> what am I going to do, Dave? This is the actual one. Now, the actual painting that they had, uh, they sold off separate. So when San Francisco got these figures, they had that one made. And the bottom of it is not finished. Okay. They thought, well, that'd be kind of like he's painting it and so on, whatever. So that's her. Now, this is Frank and John, and this is Ooh. Madonna. <laughs> and in uh, oh, Italy, yeah. when she did Italy tour. And this is the outfit Frank and John. Frank and John made all her outfits before she met that other designer. And uh, when I had a birthday, they sent me a box. And this is Happy Birthday, Ken. And this was in it. This is actually hers. I have the boots, I have the whole outfit. No kidding. The pants, you know, the stockings, everything. And this is her uh, actual gloves that she wore with it. I did have the blue dress that went over this, but I sold it in auction. A blue dress went over it? Yeah, she had a little blue dress that popped over it. Before you've seen this, she's oh. out singing it. And then she'd break open and bingo, she's wearing this. This is a friend of mine, Margaret O'Brien. Oh, okay. And this was in uh, Jane Eyre movie. This is the one Debbie owned, Debbie Reynolds. And there she is wearing it, Jane Eyre. And I bought it from the Debbie Reynolds auction. And this is the one I told you about, the arm sleeves. Mm -hmm. So these are replacement arms, but they are actually her cuffs. What made them and shred? Her Do you know? Uh, the material just rotted away. I see. Yeah. She does have berry stains. I asked her, I said, well, how'd you get berry stains? She goes, I used to have strawberries when I'd break, I'd take a break, I'd go to the craft service and eat strawberries. Oh, funny. <laughs> and she dropped strawberries on it and it stained it. Funny she it remembers. Yeah. <laughs> that's wild. But that's her outfit. The back is um, Missy Gaynor and that's a Bob Mackey. It's all coat feathers. We love Mitzi. Mitzi, it's wonderful. I have several costumes of Mitzi. I have about five costumes of hers. And this is Liza Minnelli. Liza. And she wore this at the MGM uh, show at the MGM in Las Vegas. This is actually her outfit. I have, I have a black one that she wore, and I also have the red beaded one that she wore. She's tall, isn't she? Yeah, she's very tall. Yeah. And the shoes are interesting. Uh, the shoes that I got... I wanted them because she wore those shoes with this outfit in Vegas okay. on stage. And I said, I got to have this. So I had to pay for 18 pairs of shoes at hers to get them. Oh. <laughs> so I have, you know, 17 pairs of shoes put away. <laughs> oh, those yeah. are all sequins. Yeah, it's all sequins. All her outfits were sequins. And this here, she has snaps built in them. And that kept them from separating, so she wouldn't lose her blouse when she's dancing. So. Yeah. And who is this? This is from a Palace of Living Art. This is called the Captive. Oh. From Palace of Living Art. It's Michelangelo. It was made in Paris. It's made out of fiberglass, the whole thing. 
and uh, it has everything, kibbles and bits. Oh, yeah? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you lift that up, you'll see the kibbles and bits. I gotta. You know I gotta. I can't show <laughs> I it. because you, you can't show it on camera, <laughs> but yeah, you got But look at it. Yeah, it's all. Now, when I got it, Fong had it, and he used it in the war chamber in San Francisco. So he cut big, giant X's and put blood down it and everything, <laughs> and he carved big X's out of it. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. And I ended up having to carve onto the whole thing and then repair it and then paint the whole thing again. See, this is another thing I was talking about, the skin tones, because he, he, he could wake up right now. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? He could, he could. Yeah, there's purples and all kinds of colors in yeah. that skin tone. And uh, the skin is not one color. So you're, you're having to change the different colors mm -hmm. and the highlights and the deep dark. And even the, the hair is all hand painted on. Now this is Vincent Price okay. in the House of Wax, oh. in Movie Land. Eesh. But I don't, I, I didn't keep the table. I didn't want the table. It was too big. I had no room for it. So I left the girl there that was on the table that breathed back and forth. Uh -huh. Her legs were missing anyway, so I would have had to replace her legs. But this is actually Vincent Price in the House of Wax at Movie Land. And then I put Peter Lorre's head at the bottom because they always work together. <laughs> I thought, well, that's kind of cute. Why not? It's Very. Do you know whose hands those are? No, I don't. <laughs> Just curious. Because Cynthia, you know, she gave me that box of hands. Yeah. And it was... Sometimes they write them. Yeah. No, it's kind of not written, but sometimes they write them at the arm risk. But no, these are not written. This is actually heavy. It's fiberglass. Those are fiberglass. This wow, is, you're not this kidding. This is lightweight, though. Yeah, they are heavy. You know, they make them out of everything in the kitchen sink. <laughs> you name it, it's made. <laughs> yeah, really. It's perfect. Oh my god. Works just like that. Peter Lorre, that is incredible. Yeah, this Peter Lorre. He came from uh, the Wax Museum in Hollywood. And see, that's part of the thing is nobody would know who Peter Lorre is if you no, saw him. No, they don't know who he is anymore. They'd be like, you know, show me. R around the world in 80 days. Drew yeah, Barrymore or something. Yeah. Well, he was a great actor. Yeah. And Logan did this one and he had plunged it all. It didn't really look like uh, Vincent until Logan got a hold of it and changed it. Yeah. And what year would you say this is circa? Oh my god. He was there when I was going through the museum. So it had to be in the 70s, mm -hmm. mid 70s he was there. And you think, uh, clothing. a lot of times these guys would would come to their own unveiling, wouldn't they? Oh, I had pictures of him standing next to it. Yeah? Yeah. Now, him and Canteen Floss and a lot of stars came in to their unveiling. Oh, it's so funny because it's, it's, I just made the association that uh, in that uh, film they were throwing Peter Lorre's head back and forth, uh, mm -hmm. the Edgar Allan Poe series, and he's like, give yeah. me back my head. And the head was made at Don Poe Studios. Don oh, Post really? Made that head, yeah. Oh, fun. Made out of foam so they could bounce it back and forth. <laughs> oh, neat. That's a great movie. Yeah. I haven't seen that in ages House either. House of Wax is wonderful. Yeah. I love House of Wax. This is my workshop. Oh. Thanks for watching this interview with Ken. I think, I think he's a fascinating guy. Uh, inside his uh, work is his workshop and his uh, prop collection. And it's it's very interesting. And there's so there's a lot more to this video if you're into it. And it's on my Patreon page. If you uh, look at the comment section down below this video, uh, you'll see a link to the Patreon page. And for a couple of bucks a month, you'll be able to access some uh, exclusive content, stuff that uh, I don't post normally, some photos and things like that and stories. So, uh, and also a monthly question and answer period. And I respond to uh, messages there as well pretty quickly. So uh, if you want to join the Patreon page and, and watch the end of this, which is, there's another half hour, 40 minutes of, uh, of content from Ken's place, uh, join up below at my Patreon link. And thanks for watching this video. I appreciate your time and I appreciate your attention. And until next time. You heard me.